All right, I thought I'd have a discussion. Um, what are the best handgun cartridges, just in general, when you're talking about handgun cartridges? And I think every rule I'm going to apply covers not just one particular aspect of handguns, as far as target practice, home defense, concealed carry. Really what I'm going to say pretty much covers everything. And I think there are two really good cartridges that are probably, in my opinion, the best. And I'm not going to knock any other cartridge and say, well, some cartridges are bad and whatnot. Because they all have their place in the right platform. But there are a couple of cartridges that no matter the platform, they really are a great all-around cartridge. And there's a few criteria I have when it comes to judging that. Now I'm going to go through a lot of these common cartridges here that a lot of people use for home defense, concealed carry, and whatnot. And I'll give you my opinions on them. Um, you got like the 22s, the 22 caliber ones, you've got your 25 ACP 32 calibers, 389 millimeter, 38 special, 357 mag, 40 Smith and Wesson, 357 SIG, 45 auto, 44 special, 44 magnum. These are really your common cartridges. And I'm going to tell you what I really think are the two best. And my criteria are going to be three different criteria. And one of them is really important. And my first criteria is energy. Does the cartridge have enough energy to be effective? And some of them really don't have enough energy to expand hollow points, to get good penetration and whatnot. The second thing is going to be, are they big enough of a cartridge? In my opinion, big enough. I think that 9mm plus is going to be kind of the, the um, bare minimum, I would say, of a good cartridge. You want to have 9mm size and above or at least have that bullet expand to that size. That's my second criteria. And my third criteria, and this is probably the most important, is the shootability of that cartridge in every gun you can think of. When you think about a certain cartridge, let's take the 357 Magnum for instance. Is it a great cartridge? Yes. Is it a great cartridge in my 686 with a 4 inch barrel? Yes. Is it a good cartridge in an end frame, a large frame revolver? Yes. Now you put that in a little air light 11 ounce gun, they make those. Is that a great cartridge? No, it's not. It's not at all a great cartridge. I'm going to go through these really quick. 22, eh, most people tell you those are not really that great for self defense, personal protection. Sure, they have their place, but they're certainly not ideal. 25 auto, that's probably one of the worst you can you can imagine. Your 32 ACP, those are, those are, those are nice, but again, there's a couple of criteria that they don't meet as well. They don't really have enough energy. And what my, my criteria for energy is I think about 225 foot-pounds of energy is that threshold where you can start to get good expansion on a 9 millimeter sized bullet in a, And I say that because I, I have a lot of experience with shooting um, these, these, these diameter bullets. You don't typically get as much expansion. And another thing is with diameter, you also want to have good weight. And when you talk about something like a 380, I'm going to go on to 380 next. A 380 doesn't really have very much weight. So even though it's a 9mm size bullet, there's not a lot of weight behind it. Typically 100 grains is your max. And that's an important thing when it comes to uh, handgun cartridges, especially if you need just a general cartridge, let's say dangerous game. You know, a, a properly loaded 38 Special probably could take down a dangerous game. A 380 probably not. So that's another little aspect I'm going to throw in there too. But I'll get in that, into that in a minute. So back onto the 32. It doesn't have a lot of energy. And you can't really up that energy. The bullet diameter is a little too small in my opinion. You're not going to get good expansion because you don't have that much energy. And you can't up the energy. You don't have enough case capacity. Same with the 32s. Now the 327 Magnum's is alright. But is it shootable in every gun? You know, you get those little LCRs, 17 ounces. Well, this is basically a Magnum cartridge. It is going to be not all that shootable. This plus ammo is kind of iffy if you can find it. A little bit uncommon. Now, I'm going to go into the first real common one here, the 380. Is the 380 a good cartridge? It's a good cartridge. Does that have enough energy to reliably um, expand a hollow point? Well, it's a long enough barrel. It does. 
but typically you're well below 200 foot pounds of energy and you really can't up that much even with the longer barrel you can't up that because the case capacity is very small on a 380 and I got one right here I mean this is very tiny you compare that to something like 30 special I mean it's 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 tiny you're not gonna be able to up that energy so is it okay if you have a plus P and a long barrel it, it would it would be okay, but across all platforms, you put it down in a micro gun, it's not really going to be that ideal. And after that, we go on to the 38 Special. Is the 38 Special a good cartridge? Yes. Does it have enough energy, especially with a plus P, to open a hollow point reliably? Yes, it has more than 225 foot pounds of energy in a plus P. Even, even in a snubby barrel, a plus P will have 225. That's, that's kind of my my entry level point from what I've noticed. Does it have enough diameter? 30, 35 caliber plus? Yes. Is it shootable in all guns? Yes. You get a large gun that shoots like a dream and you take it down to a little tiny J-frame snub nose, it still is shootable by most people. So that's going to be one of the most best calibers in all platforms. Now the next cartridge this is the other one, the 9mm Luger. Does it have enough energy? Yes. It's got about 275 foot-pounds of energy in a little micro gun. It's got 350 foot-pounds in a 4-inch barrel. It has enough energy to expand a hollow point well. Does it have enough diameter? Yes, it's 35 caliber plus. And the bullet weights are generally 115 up to 147. It has enough weight to be effective against dangerous game. And the last one, is it shootable in all guns? Yes. The 9mm Luger is pretty much shootable in all guns. Whether you have a full-size gun, you take it down to a micro gun, is it going to be shootable for the average person? Yes. 357 Magnum. I started talking about that. Is that a good cartridge? Does it have enough energy? Certainly. Does it have enough diameter? Yes. Is it shootable by most people in all guns? No. They have 357 Magnums. You know, the LCR of 17 ounces, the little uh, Scandium Smith brand, 11 ounces. This is not shootable by most people, and, and even by people that are experts and know how to shoot a gun well, not really all that shootable. 40 Smith & Wesson, does that have enough energy and diameter? Yes. Is it shootable in all guns? You're going to kind of get into maybe, maybe not. Um, it is snappy. I would say it, it, it's right on the border, but probably not shootable in all guns if you go down to a really, really tiny micro gun. But I'm not knocking the cartridge whatsoever. It's kind of on that borderline. 357 SIG. Doesn't it have energy and diameter? Yes. Shootable in all guns. Well, the guns they have for it are generally a little bit larger, but if you did take a gun and you brought it down to some of these micro-sized guns, if they ever start making those, really not going to be shootable by most people because it is a very powerful cartridge. It's almost as powerful as the 357 Magnum. So if they did make a small gun, it would not necessarily be shootable by most people. 45 Auto definitely has enough energy and diameter, but you take it down to a little micro gun, 20 ounce gun, the muzzle flip on that is generally not shootable by most people. 44 Special and Magnum, kind of getting in the same area here. 44 Special's pretty similar to the uh, 45 Auto. And I'm not even going to start talking about the 44 Magnum. We know about that. And the 10 millimeter, kind of the same thing with the 44 Magnum. So they go through all these things. What are the best handgun cartridges? And really two of them. Just two of them really stand out as being really, really ideal for every purpose along the way. They have enough energy to open a hollow point reliably. They have enough weight, bullet weight, to, if you had a hard cast or a full metal jacket bullet, to break bone through dangerous game. They have enough diameter, 35 caliber. Even if it didn't expand, it's going to do some good damage. And it's shootable in all guns from... Big, heavy, high-capacity guns or large revolvers down to little micro 9mm or a micro G-frame 38 Special. So the 38 Special and the 9mm are the best cartridges, in my opinion, across the board.
Now certainly, if, if you have the right platform, you have a large, heavy revolver, certainly a 357 Magnum is more effective than a 38 Special. And certainly a 45 Auto or a 40 is a little more effective than a 9mm. But they don't have those micro guns, and if they did, they would be hard to shoot. But all the way across the board, the 38 Special and the 9mm are the best handgun cartridges, period. That's my opinion. So I thought I'd share that, so get on here and share your opinions. I know, I know there's a lot of opinion about this stuff, but that's mine and that's my experience over the years. So as always, thanks for watching.